Hi everyone, my name is Miss Ashley and I am the Fab Lab Facilitator at the Science Spectrum. And today we are going to do an activity called Paper Mountain. So what you will need is a piece of paper, preferably white, but colored construction paper will work as well. You will need at least two different colored markers. You will also need a cup of water with a dropper. And if you don't have a medicine dropper, you can use a spoon. Other additional material that I'm going to use that is not necessary for this activity, but if you have it, feel free to use it, includes glitter, glue sticks, or glue, and I'm also going to use these little plastic animals to decorate my paper mountain at the very end. So Earth used to be connected as one big supercontinent called Pangaea. But then the Earth's plate started to shift and move, causing Pangaea to break apart into the seven continents that we have today. So as the Earth uh, moved, it began to move towards each other or away from each other. The pieces that moved towards each other, the plates that moved towards each other and met could either go up or they could go down. The plates that would move towards each other and be pushed up create mountains, and the plates that push towards each other and move down created valleys. So today we are going to create our own mountains and valleys. So to begin, you will need your piece of paper. I put a pizza tray underneath my piece of paper to collect the water once we add it so that it's not as messy. But first, you're going to want to take your piece of paper and crumple it up. You don't want to tear it up, but you want to make sure it's crumpled up. So once we get it nice and crumpled, we are going to uncrumple our paper and try not to tear it. Now this doesn't look very pretty, but it's exactly what we want. Because if you can see, I have some places where the paper is going up. So I have my ridges and some places where the paper is going down. So I have my valleys. And I think I'm gonna flip this over. So we wanna make sure you have some places that are low and some places that are high. So I'm going to put my paper on my tray. So next, I'm going to take one of the markers and I'm going to start coloring the ridges. And remember, the ridges are when the plates are moving towards each other, they meet and they're pushing against each other and they begin to form up. So we're going to color our ridges. So we're going to start coloring the top pieces of our paper mountain. And it's okay if you're not an artist, but we all are scientists. So we're just going to color those ridges, the, the top pieces of our mountains or, the, or our paper. And color those ridges. My paper kind of only has one mountain. There's another ridge over here. So make sure, and your, your paper might have more ridges. It might have more valleys. So take your time coloring your, what you think is your ridges and valleys. You want to add, make sure you're adding color to your
Okay. I think I almost have most of my ridges colored in. Okay, so next, and take your time. If you have more ridges that need to be colored, go ahead and color those in as well. Okay, next, I'm going to take my other colored marker and start to color in my values. And remember, values are when those two plates that meet and push together go down. They push each other down. So next you want to color your valley. So those are the low spots in your paper. So coloring with my green, my valleys are what you think is your valleys. Hmm. I'm not sure if this part's a valley. I think so because it goes low. But then we'll see when we add the water on. Because the water, the pool in the valleys, is remember that's a low part. So that's where the water is going to connect, collect. I think that's a valley, but we will have to see. That's a valley. See that I missed some of my ridges. Oh, this is definitely a valley as well. Put that in. All this over here is pretty much a valley. Okay, so I'm going to go back and color in some more ridges because I missed a side. Okay, so my paper looks very colorful. So next, I'm going to take my dropper or my spoon. And I'm going to pour water over my ridges. So I'm just going to do a few drops because I don't want to oversaturate my paper. So I'm just going to add a few drops of water to the ridges. And then you can watch and see the marker disperse. And you can see Um, how the color on the ridges disperses and moves down the mountain. So if it rained on the ridges, you could see how the water could kind of move down the mountain or move down the ridges. I'm just going to add some drops to my ridges and watch. I colored my ridges in purple, so I'm watching the purple disperse throughout my landscape. It almost looks tie-dye. I'm going to keep adding water to my ridges and see how the water causes the color to move down the mountain. Okay. Hold it up so you can see. I know that's going to cause my water to kind of disperse into the valleys as well. But as you can see, you can see that the color on my ridges dispersed, and this is kind of how water would move down, move down mountains. So next, I'm going to add a little bit of water to my valleys just to see if they're actually valleys. If the water stays in that area, it's, it's a valley, but if the water moves down, it could be kind of partially a ridge or uh, partially on the side of a mountain. So our valleys usually 
collect water. Okay, I'm gonna hold it up for you guys again so you can see. This is my paper mountain, kind of showing how water would fall throughout the landscape. So next, I'm going to use the glitter, and I have blue glitter to act as rain. So I didn't put any blue on my paper, and that's okay, but I'm going to pour some glitter over my paper mountain to see where the rain would collect, if it would collect in my valleys or if it's going to collect in my ridges. So I'm just going to pour some glitter over my paper, all over. I'm going to shake it around a bit. And you can see that my glitter collected right here in a valley. So if I had water coming down on my mountain, the water would collect in the valley, but it also collects in some of, um, in some of the mountain that's going down to the valley. So it starts from the ridge and then goes down to the valleys. So this is kind of how we can tell how water is dispersed throughout the landscape. So I'm gonna let this dry, but lastly, if I wanted to, I could add some, um, I could add some little animals to my landscape or plants, and I'm gonna use a little shark. I'm gonna stick this shark in my valley, in my water, so he can be happy swimming in the water. And I'm gonna put a tree also in, hmm, I don't wanna put my tree in the valley in case if it gets too much water. I might put it over here by the ridges. All right, guys, and that is how you make a paper mountain. So if you did this activity along with me or if you plan to do it, um, please share it with us. We would love to see, and you can tag us at Science Spectrum at home. But again, thank you guys for doing this activity with me. We miss you. We can't wait to see you, but we want to make sure everybody's safe until then. So thank you guys for doing science with me today. Bye.